What is going on my friends? Welcome to today's video and in this video we're going over the best methods to use to measure your body fat and in honor of my cut kicking off for my birthday next month we're gonna go over the results of a DEXA scan that I got yesterday to measure my body fat and if I'm gonna be honest the results shocked the hell out of me so that'll be at the end of the video but first we'll get into methods that you can use for yourself yeah Coming at you guys from beautiful Houston, Texas in a wonderful Airbnb. I'm at the at Christian Guzman's Summer Shredding event. Excited to be here this weekend, network, meet awesome people, hang out. So let's get into it. And right before we get into these methods, I will say that there is no current method today that can measure your body fat with 100% accuracy. Even the most accurate of readings have a margin of error, 1% or so, okay? And then the second thing is, the best way to measure your body fat, whether you use skin calipers, DEXA scan, whatever, is the same time during the day, ideally in the morning when you're on an empty stomach. Guys, the order that these are gonna follow is the most realistic method that you can use. So first is the skin fold calipers. Now this has been a method that's been around for over 50 years. It's very easy to do, and it essentially measures the subcutaneous fat below uh, the layer of your skin, okay? You know, you can do this in a gym setting, you can order them off Amazon and do it at home. There are, uh, there's definitely something to be said for the quality of calipers you use, so I would recommend uh, spending a little more coin on some some more durable ones, ones that have good reviews on Amazon. Let's just settle with that, okay? The margin of error with skin fold calipers is three to 5%, sometimes even higher. So, while it's not the most accurate method, for 99% of us, it's the most realistic method uh, if you so choose to measure your body fat often. Now, the second method is body circumference measurements. And this is very simple. All you need is a tape measure and your height, your age, and then you take some specific measurements around your body, around your arm, around your torso, around your thigh, and then based on those measurements, you can gauge body fat percentage. This is a method that the armed services in the United States use quite often. It is not very accurate two to 4% margin of error, if not higher, so about on par with the skin fold calipers. Again, very accessible, a lot of us can do it, uh, but again, not so accurate. Method number three, the DEXA scan, also called dual energy absorptiometry. So yesterday I went to a uh, endocrinology clinic in Austin, you'll see it at the end of the video. During the DEXA scan, you lie on your back for six minutes, six to 10 minutes, while an X-ray runs over you, keep your hands straight, you breathe as normal, you don't move. The DEXA is great for measuring your bone density and also your lean body mass, the fat separation from your lean body mass in several different areas all over uh, your torso, all over your whole body. So obviously with a DEXA scan, you do need to go to a healthcare facility to get it done. However, it provides a smaller margin of error, 2% to 3%, 3.5%, which is definitely more accurate than the skin fold calipers and the body circumference measurements. Method number four is air displacement plethymography quite a tongue, tongue twister as well, and that's, this is the bod pod. So I've gotten a bod pod once before, back in college, and essentially you do need to go to a facility as well. You can have them at, uh, some gyms have them, higher end gyms, healthcare facilities, and essentially this is using air pressure to measure your body fat percentage. The relationship between the volume and pressure of air allows this device to predict the density of your body. And when it comes to the accuracy of this, it's very good, and the margin of error is in between two to 4%, which is very similar to the DEXA scan. Method number five is called hydrostatic weighing or hydrodensitometry. It's underwater weighing. Again, measuring your body fat based on density. This technique weighs you while you're submerged underwater after exhaling as much air as possible from your lungs. Now when the testing is performed perfectly, the margin of error is as low as 2%. So these five methods I've just highlighted, of all of them, the most accurate would be the underwater testing, the least accurate, probably skin fold or body circumference uh, measuring. Now as I've been talking through these five, you can notice as the accuracy has been increasing, as in going from 5% accuracy down to 2% margin of error, the ease of access, unfortunately, has been decreasing. All right, so that's kind of the trade-off that we pay to get to some of these more accurate methods. So which method is best for you to use? Well, that depends. We have to answer some questions here. What's the purpose of you measuring your body fat percentage? For me, example, I wanted to get the DEXA scan, which is a reasonably accurate measurement because I'm documenting this cut for you guys and I want to get an accurate reading, okay? However, 
for 90% of us, that's that level of accuracy is not needed. Um, we just need the skin fold calipers, maybe the body circumference testing. If you want to get super accurate, you can go for going for the bod pad, bod pad, bod pod, or the underwater testing. Other questions to ask, how important is high accuracy to you? Kind of touched on that briefly. And then how often are you wanting to measure your body fat percentage? Guys, I wouldn't recommend measuring body fat percentage any more frequently than a week or two weeks. Probably two weeks to be honest. Uh, again, I've measured my body fat like three times in my life. It's not really necessary unless you're just super analytical and you want to know the number. Don't need to measure it that often. A couple more questions. Do you want a method that you could perform at home? And is price a factor? If you want to be able to measure at home and price is a factor, again, I would go with skin fold calipers, option number one, and option number two, which is the body circumference testing. Guys, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a big body fat measurer. I've never been in my life, I've, I've measured it probably two or three times, because it's just not important to me. I'll monitor weight every so often, and I will monitor the way that I feel, and I will monitor my look in the mirror. That's what satisfies me. I don't obsess over the numbers, especially with something that's not so accurate. 100% fat. I think the number you're looking for is right here. 9.3%. Wow, okay. Kind of surprising, huh? Yeah, that is surprising. Yeah, I don't know that I've seen anybody so low. No, I don't think so, and I do quite a bit of them. Where the two blue marks come together, the two blue bars come together, is the average. So basically, for your age, which is what, 26, something like that? 26. You would be expected to be right here. Well, we can be anywhere in between these two edges of the blue and be within 97% of the population, which is white males, okay, age 26. You're over here, your, your, body, your percent body fat is way down here at the low end of that range. Wow. Um, so that's, that's that part. Now here's another graph, and this is basically just BMI, body mass index, just your height and weight. Okay. Okay, so yours is right here. Uh, because you're uh, of your weight. Oh my gosh. This is the normal. So you'd be thought of as obese if you just had the body mass index. But here you have more information here. Okay. Yeah. You have your percent body fat, which this doesn't have a percent body fat. It just says height and weight. Sure. Yeah, the BMI is quite yeah. quite it, off. Yes, it is. Very much so. Yeah, and this is the bone mineral density and this is the age. And again, we'd expect you to be right here. For That's a zero. Um, and your value is way up here. Your, bo your bone density, bone mineral density, is much higher than the average man of a, a white male of age 26. Much higher. Yeah. So guys, as you can see, 9.3% body fat, which is honestly very shocking to me. I was expecting something, honestly, a lot higher. You can see on the screen now, uh, me kind of just showing you what my physique looks like. This is after three days being on uh, this cut, on this diet, getting myself back on track. Bloat has gone down. I feel a little bit leaner, actually quite a bit leaner, after three or four days of tracking macronutrients. Again, here they're on the screen. This is what I've been tracking at this past week. Uh, yeah, just to go over these results again, I'll put some flyover on the screen, but uh, really cool. 9.3% body fat is the reading, and it has the regions of my body uh, reading through all the body fat percentages there. Uh, Guys, honestly, the DEXA, I would guess I'm realistically at 11 or 12%, potentially even 13%, uh, just based on, hmm. I don't really have anything else to base it on, it's just honestly, I just think this is this is low, and a lot of times when I've seen DEXA scans, the readings have been fairly low, just from looking at other people's on uh, on YouTube and whatnot, but, um, but it's pretty interesting to see. Uh, and then this goes on to talk about just body mass index in general goes on to talk about uh, bone mineral density. It's interesting to see that I'm at the low end of the spectrum on the total body fat graph for individuals my age, white males, 26, but then I'm obese on the BMI scale, which we know that's complete BS. No one should go by the BMI scale ever. Um, so this is the starting point, I guess. I think I may do this again in two to three weeks to see what the reading is like. But uh, if I'm truly at 9.3 right now, uh, which, by the way, I look kind of obese in these like these X-ray photos. It's very funny. Um, if this is truly me, then I would hope to get down to six percent or lower uh, for the beach, which is going to be tough and mentally taxing. But we could do it because we're strong human beings. So it's going to be a quick video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Pretty, pretty informative. Um, didn't really show you much of anything going on. No workouts, but that will come in the next video because we're back on it. And um, 
I'm gonna take you guys through this this cut. Who knows? Maybe I'll continue it and do uh, something a little more exciting than just go to the beach. But we'll see. See you in the next one.